Alright guys, so in this one we're going to go ahead and play with some lights, cameras, and the compositor a little bit to help push your renders out and make them look a little bit better. So last video I showed how to do it kind of in Photoshop, which is pretty standard technique with photography, but uh, in Blender you have a lot more options available to you, such as things like light groups, right? But um, something important to remember here, we'll start with a new scene, is that Blender has cycles, right? And so if you switch over to that cycles render engine, uh, it's a physically accurate renderer for the most part. Uh, it's got some, it's not quite perfect, but it, it's pretty good. And so you can do a lot of things with this. Like you can mimic real life situations that you might encounter if you're doing photography or doing a video production or things like that, right? So uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is just set up this little area real quick. We'll just go into edit mode and control B, bevel, mouse wheel up, uh, create a plane, do all this number, right? Um, your normals auto smooth here. These are the same object, or I'm gonna press L, select this, and separate it because they're the same object. But all right, press Shift A. We're gonna create a monkey. Doing Suzanne here. I'm gonna rotate her on Z, so R Z. Hold Control, hit 90 degrees there. Control three to subdivide her. Shade smooth. So right click, shade smooth. There we go. Now we can jump through all that real quick. We have kind of like a little studio set up, more or less. Something like this anyways. And so um, sometimes it's helpful to also have things in your 3D scene that uh, are reflected in the surface of something. So if Susan was metallic here and super glossy, you would see things in the background. Oh, if you have just empty space, you're not going to see much. So you might want to actually do a full set dress or at least have something interesting reflected in the surface. There are other ways of rendering. You could use like HDR images, but we're going to do this for now just to mimic a little bit more of like a real life situation or scenario. So we could play with these lights and we can kind of see how they behave and work here in Blender. So uh, let's go ahead and go to render preview. Make sure you're in cycles, right? And render preview will look something like this. There's no lights added yet. It's really just a gray scene. So we're going to add in a, um, a light area light. Okay. I'm going to press G, Z, bring it up. There we go. So top-down lighting, pretty pretty standard, right? All right, what we want to do, and it's going to be hard to snap into a side view because, well, that's blocking the way. Just keep that in mind. It might happen. Uh, so we're going to rely off pressing R and X, doing this number, and doing like something like that. So there's like a side light, right? Kind of pointed right at our subject. And uh, this is what we got going on now. So not very interesting, right? But we can spice this up very quickly um, by doing some basic light setups that you would probably do in real life, right? And so let's try duplicating this out, going to the other side, rotating around this way. Now we got something like this going on, okay? And so right here we can see it's dark in the middle and there's two bright lights on each side. It's hard to distinguish these apart from each other, so we're gonna go ahead and change their colors to something different. This one's a light yellow. I'm gonna change this one to a light blue. We got something like that. Got a cool and a warm light. All right, now, uh, something that's really hard to see sometimes here in Blender, uh, but there might be times you want to do something like this, is that in uh, real life, you have things called reflectors, right? And so more or less, it's just a surface that's got either kind of like an aluminum effect on it or gold, or uh, sometimes it might just be pure black. And the reason why is because you want to be able to control how the light bounces around in your scene. Well, you can do that inside of Blender as well. And it's actually pretty cool because um, if we put this over here, for example, make it large, just to give you an idea of what's going to happen. Sometimes uh, studios will have like multiples of these set up as well. They might have like two of them. And then just have the camera guy poke through the like, middle of them almost or something like that, right? So something like that might be occurring. Right now these are just pure white, but let's go ahead and make them, give them a material. So we're going to use the same material on both of them. Click the new, create a material. We're going to change this to black real quick. And we're going to turn the roughness all the way up. And um, specular down for now. Actually, we'll leave specular alone just because. Uh, all right. All right. And so let's get back in here. These two, I'm going to combine them. And we're going to call it reflector. Okay. And so right now, we can see it on the list. So we can get a good up close personal look at this, what's going to happen here. So if we take those reflectors and turn them off real quick, 
we may or may not see anything occurring here. Sometimes it can be pretty hard to get this to go in uh, Blender and be noticeable. So right now this is how it looks lit. If I turn it on, you see how this all becomes a little bit darker in the middle? Okay, so if we take Susan, give her a material, make her metallic, turn the roughness down. We'll see what's happening a little bit better with this way. All right, the reflector's on, reflector's off. Okay, so you can dramatically change the lighting, the contrast of the subject with something like that. If needed, this is something you can just do um, if needed, right? So let me turn those back on. There you go. Uh, so in real life, a lot of times people will use a white surface. And the reason being is they want to cast more light into the subject, right? And so you can see instantly how that behaves. It brightens everything up a lot more, okay? So you don't necessarily have to rely always off of light sources. Think about what your lights are bouncing off of as well. It's pretty important because this is what a lot of directors do. You know, they, they meticulously craft how they set up their lighting when they have uh, maybe characters are in view and they're talking to each other and they might have a light set up for that as opposed to running down a corridor or something like that. Right? And so you can play with these ideas and, and not have any problems with it the more you do it. Also, uh, color comes into effect as well. So keep that in mind. I want to just point that out. It's not just tonal values here. So if I was to um, grab these real quick and I change them to bright green, you see how the green light bounces back? Okay. And so if we did like a soft kind of pinkish red skin tone you can do things like that as well it might influence things in, in a way that you artistically want it to go right all right so with that out of the way we're going to keep these but we're just going to turn them back to black and we're going to make susan um, not that reflective anymore so we got this going on again and um well, let's adjust some of these lights so these are just like side lights right now Let's go ahead and put one behind. And in this situation, actually, we're going to get rid of this one. No, we'll keep it. Sorry. We'll keep it. Uh, do one behind, up from above. Point it down a little bit. We're going to create something like a rim light. Use red for this one, I think. we turn that strength up a lot. So this is a great time to use these kinds of uh, surfaces here because uh, right now, Let's make them darker if we can. Turn that roughness all the way up, specular down, something like that. Some you can't really do in real life, but you can get certain materials are like super dark, but okay. So we'll do more of a red. So that's going to keep that light from bouncing around too much, generally speaking, especially if you had something a little bit smaller, like a, and there's something called a snoot, right? That lets you kind of do a directional beam that's really intense. Um, and then you could catch it with one of these. They need to fall off. It would just disappear from it. So, um, All right. So this one's a little bit blue. This one's a little too bright, I think. But go with something like that. Let's do... I don't like the red. Let's do like a sci-fi-ish cyan or something. Okay. It could be a little rough looking at it as it's trying to render and update all the time. So uh, sometimes it helps just to be able to go through here, do it like so, and uh, EV perhaps. But you might want to use scene lights and scene world for material preview. And also you might want to go back to your EV settings and set it to just viewport one, just so it doesn't flicker and stuff. Then you can go back to cycles. Okay, and this is just to give you a better idea of like how things are starting to go, how they're getting set up, but it's not final obviously. So. All right, and yeah, so I'm I'm okay with this. I want a small fill light at the front, so right in front of this reflector, pointed down at the subject. We're gonna do very very small light there, just to control just to control that fill light. That's all I want. I'm gonna go with a um, another blue, I think. Okay, so there we go. Let's see how it looks with the render preview. Pretty interesting. 
but we'll play with it more here in a second. Okay, uh, one thing I do want to point out is that without even going into the compositor or anything, you have color management in your render settings. I, I rely off this heavily because I don't really care to go into the compositor all that much, but uh, you can just bump up like the exposure values or bump them down, whatever the case, and you can drop the uh, gamma values as well. So you can do things like this to get a little bit more contrast out of your image. It's quite useful. Um, you're going to find yourself doing this quite quite a lot the more you uh, play with it. So get, get into Blender and all that. So you get some pretty dramatic things going on. We're going to turn Susan Metallic again. Oh, it's already metallic. Make her smooth. I guess roughness down. You see how that looks, right? It's crazy. Maybe not perfectly smooth, so it doesn't capture all of the reflection of the the reflectors there. So I think they're called diffusers now, actually. But anyways, so we got this going on. I'm gonna bevel this because it's driving me nuts being so sharp. But using hard ops for that. Just Quick bevel and shade it smooth. All right. All right, here's where it gets fun. We're going to go into um, our render settings up here. Okay, this this is the, uh, the layer properties, sorry, render layers. And there's light groups in here. So I want to create one. I'm going to call it fill. Create one and call it um, side. We created two side lights. We got the fill light in the front, and now we have also um, the background, which we will have the um, the rim that I was trying to create. Now, also the environment gets added in here too. So I just do an ENV one, okay? And so these are all um, take up a slot basically. So this light here. We have to go to this properties panel, which is kind of weird. You think it would be down here, but it's up here. So in here, you can actually um, go to shading, light group, and we're going to toss this one into rim. Go back to solid view while we do this. And um, this one will be a side light. This one, we could mark different side lights individually, but we're going to do those as a group. And then we'll have the fill. And we have the two basically diffusers right there, which uh, select one of them. There you go. I want to flip the normal around, so I want to be able to select them this way. But um, alt in to flip a normal. All right, so we have all this going on, and I'm not sure about the environment one, how you set that up exactly. But I'm guessing it's got something in here, maybe. Or just automatically happens, maybe. No, light group. Here we go. Environment. Bam. So we should be able to adjust the environment now, too. All right. And so we're going to create a camera real quick. So Shift A, create camera. This went somewhere in here. I'm going to hit the tilde key and then go view camera down here in the floor, apparently. So WASD, Shift to kind of fly around. So Control tilde. Tilde key, view camera, control tilde. Now you can fly around. Hit G if you want to walk. I don't have anything to scale right now, so it's not the best it could be. These back faces are kind of like out of the way, but in the render they might show up again. So just keep that in mind. Might want to turn on render preview. Yes, you can see. So I want to just poke through that a little bit, um, kind of from an angle here. All right. Now we do have comp uh, composition guides with the camera. So if you go to the camera properties, you can go to um, viewport display, composition guides. You can pull up different ones here. So there's a thirds. Kind of hard to see, but it's just... I just want to put this over closer onto a third for this right eye. The closest eye is the one you want to focus on. And so when we have this camera set up, we can shift right click, hit shift A. Now we can create an empty. Okay, and this is going to be where our camera focuses. All right, and we can actually move it around. And matter of fact, if you go to snap settings up here, and hit face median you hit G and hold control you can snap it to any surface so you can actually animate this empty and your camera will always focus in wherever this is this will be your camera focus right so our camera settings again we're gonna do depth of field that empty right here we're gonna 
I drop it. So that empty will become our focus object now. And we can change the f-stops here to get more or less blur, basically. So if we do a render preview right now, we hit Control b This is going to let me just clip this right here real quick. So I'm not rendering anything outside of it. If you ever want to get rid of this, uh, these are over here, View Regions. So Clipping Region, we just did the uh, Control b Render Region. So if you do uh, clear it, Control b right? And so we have this set up like so. Not too crazy. Um, but if I was to like snap that to the back there, the back wall, you'll see that happens. Now we start getting bokeh in all the uh, little areas here. So this is pretty nice. And But we're going to keep it on the eye. That's the way you should do a portrait for the most part. So let's go ahead and... All right. Let's go ahead and... Um, I'm going to increase the f-stop. You might have to reduce it. Mine's probably different than yours. I'm going to change it to an 8. I want the ears to be slightly fuzzy, but not out of complete focus, perhaps, you know? That's usually what I go for, anyways. Something like that. 10 isn't bad. Uh, maybe just in the middle, like a 9. It's going to be pretty crisp, though, if I do that. So we'll do an 8. All right. Okay, so now we got all this out of the way. We got, got a lot of things figured out, right? It's, it's starting to come together. So, here's one other thing I want to point out real quick. Um, focal length is at 50 millimeter. This is a common portrait length, right? But if you're doing like street photography, it's 35. If you're doing uh, product, a lot of times you go higher. Um, or some, some portraits you do like 80, if it's like full body portrait, or you want to flatten the face out. So, the higher you go, the more orthographic things look. Basically, the more flat it looks, like two-dimensional instead, as opposed to three-dimensional. So, when you're doing portrait, if you're using like 35 or 10 millimeter or something like that, um, it'll make like the nose bigger and the ears smaller. So, if you need a lot of character from like a cartoon character, you might do something like that. But if you want something to look more aesthetically pleasing, Finding a nice balance usually works well, or flattening it out a little bit. You don't always want to flatten out too much, though. Um, but like, for example, like wildlife photographers, they shoot like 300 millimeter plus sometimes, or most of the time. And um, those camera lenses are, first of all, huge and expensive, but they're, they flatten everything out so much that it, you kind of see nature in a weird way. Like, that's why when you go to like a zoo, suddenly animals look a lot different because people are generally closer to it uh, in person they they get more of that like fisheye effect kind of like the wide focal length anyways with the human eye it's like 50 millimeter or 35 millimeter so nature wildlife photography at you know 300 millimeter obviously that's going to be uh, way more flat so anyways let's move on from that before we go down that rabbit hole the um the thing here is that we set all this up all these lights are in their own light groups now we can render this so Render settings, you can adjust these and tweak these how you want. I'm using the defaults, and I'm just going to press F12 to do a single image. But over here, you can do different resolutions, right? And then um, you can change an output path. You can do uh, animation if you wanted to or something. But we're just going to press F12, let it render real quick. And we're not going to let this run the full length or we'll be here all day. Uh, but we're just going to wait for a little bit of the noise to kind of like uh, jump down here. And so this can be quite good. Okay. Because there's a denoiser in the uh, compositor, so we're going to actually play with that too. How long would this take? This is going to take 18 minutes if I just let it run. That's too slow. Yeah, my system's not a render monster, so. I'm going to let it get up to like 128, and maybe like 200 samples or something like that. It should look decent enough. I personally like noise in images. I don't know why. It's just I always like it, but. Is it a grittier, more kind of natural feel? But and we're gonna stop it right at like 200. Yeah, that's fun. Okay, we can just stop it there. Not a big deal. We can exit it. Not even a big deal because we're going over to Compositor here. We're gonna check Use Nodes. Okay, and um, we want to press Shift A and create a output viewer. Okay, this viewer is gonna put it in the backdrop here. I don't want that, so I'm going to actually turn off backdrop. Actually, I'm not even going to use the dope sheet because we're not doing any kind of animation stuff for the most part. So um, what I am going to do is switch this over to the image editor. 
and then I can open up the viewer node and I prefer this over the way it does it normally so this here this is your composite there's your viewer node we can drop that into there like so and that's what we would see right off the bat however if we take a look here because we did those light groups we can drop those over now and we can see all of the effects of the different lights right so that we can tell right there off the bat that the uh, fill light didn't do much but and we can see it does that number here's the noisy image which happens to be the same as the regular image anyways we can start combining these together using color so shift a and we're going to do a mix okay we're going to set this to add okay and we're just going to start adding colors together so here's one here's the other we're going to duplicate this now and we're going to bring them down a little bit don't hit the arrow or you do that number all right so that one into there this one into here uh, we're going to press shift d duplicate it again we're going to do this one into here and that one into there and then we're going to plug that into the viewer node you'll see nothing has changed and that's good that's what you want because we're now able to rip this image apart and make adjustments to each uh, light as we had um, dropped them in so here we can actually go ahead and do something like a color. Uh, we'll do brightness contrast. And we're going to drop this one. I want to make sure it's on the right one. It's going to be on combined environment or combined rim or, oh, the fill light was at the top. That was the environment light then. Let's do the environment light and see what happens here. It's already pretty dark, so they're not, there's not going to be much that happens here. But if I was to drop it down negative in value, you see, I can start to drop that environment a little bit, but it's not going to make much of a difference because of the way it was set up. But uh, So we can keep duplicating this brightness contrast out just so we can tweak things. See here, this one is the rim light. So, yeah, that was that backlight kind of shooting forward. should be this one up here, I think, somewhere over there. Not doing quite what I thought it would, but that's okay. Overall, we can kind of influence and affect this whole image in really kind of just different ways that are a lot of fun, in my opinion. But we can do a mix on each one of these as well. Maybe set it to, like, multiply. And um, in this case, maybe we want this one to be, like, yellow. Okay, and I uh, thought that would have had more of an effect there, but I guess not on the environment one. This one it will. But we could kind of change the light color a little bit as well, which is pretty interesting. So we can play around with it, see where it ends up, where's it, where it's going. All right. Keep taking that. We can drop it into um, other areas as well, like right here. Maybe we want more of like a amber background or something. And now you're starting to see the power of those light groups, right? Gives you a lot of opportunity to make a lot of adjustments real quick. This fill light is the last one. I want to... I'm uh, just going to do a brightness contrast. You could do exposures and gamma as well over here. I want to get this fill up somehow. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more contrast. It's going to be hard to do that on that reflective surface with that diffuser in front of it but all kinds of different things you can try to do there's no one way it fits all so like if you um select here and hold control you can also mouse wheel through these and get different results as well you can see that's quite interesting pretty dramatic some pretty cool stuff right Almost like that one right there. All right. I'm going to go back to just uh, standard add. Okay. Let's just do a mix. Let's toss in a multiply. 
and we'll do a okay you can see that fill lights right there in the front that's actually pretty nice it's not really filling up a red would look like uh, I'd say that blue is pretty good which one's the background here is it this one has the most influence on everything. This is those two big side lights, right? Splitting that up would be really nice. Didn't do it, so we'll have to just have to play with it. Generally speaking, if you have things that are pure black, it's not really a good thing. Um, Unless you're going for that just as like an artistic interpretation or something. But um, so in this case, it's a little blown out. Too dark. I might be able to get it to come back a little bit, but I don't think I will. I might need to adjust those lights a little bit more. So the environment light helps bring that up. I wonder if I could just do like a real dark grayish blue. Crank it a bit. Yeah, it's really not that bad. Not perfect, obviously. It does need more light information, but, but you might want to readjust that light and re-render. All right, and uh, we'll run with it, though. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting, I think. Keep it like a dark kind of maybe night scene or something like that, like that. All right, so we'll go with that. It's kind of cool. So uh, we can add other things like a filter. Let's do, let's do a, a, gl a glare here. Add it in. There we go. We got that number going on. So there's different glares you can use. There's ghost streaks, fogs. We're going to do a ghost. Bumping the iterations down a bit. And you can you can adjust this. So you get more color out of them or less. Um, you can change the threshold here. Do things like that. So it's really up to you. That one probably isn't the best option. Fog glow is pretty decent normally. A lot of times you only bump that size down a little bit though. All right. Really kind of brightened everything up though. All right. And see we can do a filter denoise this can get a little bit slow because it's the way it is in the stack might want to denoise at the front but these are all kind of individual things so eh. uh, but anyways that's it's pretty much it in a nutshell add a um, color brightness contrast drop it down a little bit and increase the contrast whatever you want to do here at the very end it's going to take a second for it to kind of finish combining together um, but that's pretty much it for this video guys so it's not much left that you really you know you could uh, i mean you could tweak a lot of things until you can tweak them for a while you, you can play with this for a good bit to just get like that perfect image that you want and so but there's not really a lot more tricks to it than this so you got a good taste of the overall workflow anyways and so Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will check you guys out in the next one. All right, take care.